So before we get to the rant, let's talk about a couple a couple actual volleyball things that happened. Um, first and very most notably, this came out of absolutely nowhere. The Canaliana win streak is over. Done. Just like just like over. that. Crazy. We've we've been talking about it for weeks. Like since they were coming up on the streak, they tied the record, they broke the record, uh, they got up to seventy six, and we're like, "Yo, are, are they going to make it to a hundred? Like, when is this team going to lose?" And then they promptly lose like two two matches after setting the all time record. Kind of a head scratcher. Uh, three sets to two to Firenze, who's very middle of the pack. Like of all of all the teams that we thought Canaliano would lose to, it was not this one. This was. Very weird. It came totally out of nowhere. And uh, so the funny thing was, I was looking at the stats. There wasn't even anything like that crazy that jumped off to jumped off the page to me statistically. Like Egonu was pretty good. Uh, 34 points, 31 for 64 attempts. Like 64 attempts is a lot. Um, I know that they, Caneliano didn't play Joanna Volos. They didn't play Catherine Plummer. They didn't play Robin de Cruyff. So like they have a lot of options that Santorelli is just like trying to move around some pieces. And he thought that they could probably sleepwalk through a middle of the pack Firenze team, but they didn't, they lost 15, 12 in the fifth and the streak is over. Part of me almost thinks that they're happy that it's over and I that totally there's totally agree that, with that, this. that they're relieved that it's over. Yeah. And you know what? I think, I feel like this happens a lot in sports where a team is on a big, long streak and it's just a random team that takes them out just because they just, they just don't quite have it that day because you bet your bottom dollar that any team going up against Canigliano is coming in to play that match. You know, that they, they, they want to win that match. They've been prepping for it all week. They know what to expect, but at some point, some sort of complacency has to get into Canigliano's, routine of something like I, I mean that's why the streak what, what was it 76 games at the end of it um was was so impressive because it's so hard not to just get complacent sometime you know where you have one road trip that doesn't go good and you know you just don't have it that day right like we've seen in every sport some of the best teams sometimes lose to, to, to some of the worst teams. Hell, the Detroit oh, sure. Lions got to win this weekend against a very <laughs> decent Minnesota Vikings, right? Uh, so <laughs> it, it, it's always a possible. So that's why this streak was was so incredible with how long it was. Um, but yeah, just 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 a bit of a weird one for, for Canigliano. But ultimately, I think it's probably for the best for them because I think they're probably going to get out of this and be like, look, the monkey's off our back now. Like the streak is done. Let's just go on and win all of our championships. And you know what? We'll still be the best team in the world. Exactly. I completely agree with that. There's just a, a one thing less that they have to think about now or worry about. It's like an external source of pressure that it just now straight up doesn't exist anymore. They got to the record. They got past the record. They have now set the record at 76 wins in a row. That there's a chance that will never be broken again. That's that's a completely ridiculous number that they've achieved. And now they just lost a random match, and now it's back to kind of business as usual. They can focus on what they're – they can be more goal-oriented now in, in more, a more long-term sense than feeling pressure to continue the streak every single match to go out and play. And I actually commentated their match after this, after the loss. So they lost on Wednesday. They played again on Saturday against a pretty bad Perugia team and just mopped the floor with them three sets to none. So – um, and I mentioned it a bunch on the broadcast. It looked like they were, you know, they they weren't really bothered by the fact that the streak was over. They were on to bigger and better things. Uh, and they have now restarted a new win streak, now having won exactly one match in a row. So, uh, yeah, but we did not expect it to end this early. But now that it has, I totally agree. I think they they might even be better off now. Yeah, you know, just a little bit of pressure off the back. You don't have, uh, you know, all of those expectations. There's no decisions on on coaching where they're like hey we need to keep the streak alive so we're not going to rest our best players like i i almost feel like they got to that point you know with with all with the croif and plumber and Voloj all on the bench like I, at a certain point they're just like guys we've got the record we're in the record books it's going to take another two years at least for someone to to get up to this and i mean the reality is they probably won't probably like, won't like is this a wayne gresky-esque record that will never be touched again who knows i mean we'll, we'll have to see w with volleyball i mean these rumors that have been flying around that fenerbahce is ready to give aganu a four-year six million dollar deal then maybe maybe the next record will go to go to fenerbahce um actually i i kind of want to talk about that i know that's in our show notes but these the rumors that are out there that aganu is going to be she'll be the highest paid player player in volleyball 
men, women, doesn't matter. Four years, six million dollars. That's absolutely massive. Um, especially in in women's sports, especially in volleyball. Um, it just kind of shows, you know. There's there's a lot of talk in North America here about the WNBA, uh, about the W and NWSL, like the North the the North American Soccer League or you know the the hockey leagues and stuff like that. But the reality is the biggest women's sport isn't even present here in North America, right? We That's see that the hundred percent true. We see the type of money that teams in Turkey are 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 spending for players. Teams in Italy are are spending for players for for female players. How can you not tell me that there's not a market for that? Right. And how can you not tell me that, you know what, like th- th- that's one of my biggest things about the equality in sport amongst men and women is that I feel like we're putting all of our eggs in, in, a, in a female sports basket and we're not showcasing the best female sport. The best female sport we know by far is volleyball. We know this by the numbers of of youth players playing. We know this by the numbers of the, what the NCAA puts out. Right. So when we're equating women's sport to men's sport, especially on a salary range, let's look at volleyball because Paolo Ogonu is it right. Four million dollars, four years, six million dollars. Sure. If you look at any other North American sport, that's peanuts compared to LeBron, compared to any of the other, these other players. But compared to the WNBA, compared to the N- NWHL or totally. you know, the- and that's right. And that's straight salary. That has nothing to do with endorsements. I'm, exactly. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if that would be if if that rumor deal is to come true after this season, which it's strictly a rumor for now. But I wonder if that would make her the highest paid female athlete on the planet in terms of just straight up salary, because like, I, I don't know how you would include tennis or golf in that. Yeah, those are the two. Wealth, those are the two difficult ones. Wealthy prize, women in those money. sports. But yeah, you, it's all based on how much you win. And then they all have endorsements like WNBA and WSL, like women's hockey. The, the, the endorsements are where they make more of their money. And then like the other sort of Olympic sports. But if you're talking 1.25 million a year in straight up salary for Paula Egonu, that would be absolutely insane. And I think Fenerbahce and many others agree that she's worth every penny of that. 100%. Right? I mean, look at what Canigliano has been able to do with her. Look what they were doing. Sure, they were good with her before. They make it all the way to the Champions League finals. They were already winning the Lego Vol- uh, uh, Lego Volley Femininity. But now with, with Egonu, you know, they're the biggest team on, on the planet, right? Yeah. So it's, yeah, like it, it's, a no, it's a no-brainer realistically so yeah that that's a topic for another show is tackling the the whole professional volleyball idea in the states or in canada or in north america at large both both men's and women's there's a lot going on but we can save that for probably early next year when some when a couple of those things come closer to the calendar uh but that's great that's uh, oh yeah we'll, we'll get we'll talk about vla just plenty um yeah so back back to 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 bring us back into what we prepared to talk about on the show, and I like that aside. By the way, uh, the Canadian streak is over, and now they're, they're they've started up a new one, and I think everything is fine. I still don't think anybody is, you know, thinking that they're not a title contender in Champions League or Italy anymore. They also have Women's World Club Championships starts a week from tomorrow, so Wednesday the fifteenth. We'll talk about Men's World Club Championships in a bit. Um, but yeah, I think that's all about all we got on this Canadiana run being over. I, I I will have one one last thing to say. I think that if they had lost to a team like Monza or Novara, Busto, that th- this would be this would be a much bigger story, right? Great point. Like if, if point. they had lost to one of those teams that is at the top of, of the league with them and is that competing with them, like Busto just took them to five. Um, you know they 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 had a five setter against or. They lost the first set against Scandici uh, a, a few matches ago as well. If they had lost to one of those other teams, it would be a much bigger story. But because they lost to Firenze, a middle of the pack team that is never really going to challenge them at at any level, to me, it's, right. it's it's kind of a non-topic. Yeah, it sucks the streak is done, but let's be honest, there's no doubting who the best team in women's volleyball is. Yeah, that that's that's a great point. I'm glad we wrapped it up with that because yeah, uh, Firenze isn't a threat. And Canigliano losing this match to them does not signal any kind of changing of the guard or anything like that. Um, they're still elite, and the other really good teams in Italy still haven't been able to touch them. This is just one weird like head scratcher win, and it just is what it is. 